Uh, good afternoon and welcome to today's remote New York City Council hearing of the Committee on Environmental Protection. At this time, would everyone please put their cameras on, their videos. To minimize disruption, please place electronic devices on vibrate or silent mode. Thank you for your cooperation and we're ready to begin. Sure, just give me one moment. I'm having technical difficulties with my opening statement. Give me a second. All right. um, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Costa Constantinidis. I'm chair of the Committee on Environmental Protection. Today we'll hold a hearing and a vote on legislation to improve water and air quality. Uh, stormwater from construction sites and airborne pollutants have long been routinely discharged into sewers that empty directly into the waters of the state. That discharge has long contributed to uh, uh, our water standards being depleted and so, our water, so that our waters are no longer fishable or nor swimmable, particularly when our sewage treatment plants exceeded capacity. The enactment of this local law uh, will, uh, will help improve water quality throughout the region. More importantly, for MS4 projects, this local law will ensure that such, the rules for such projects are not less stringent than the New York City MS4 uh, permit dictates. Uh, and that is for intro 1851. Uh, intro 1946A would require that the building department annually provide information regarding energy efficiency improvements to owners of buildings of all sizes, including buildings connected to gas lines. The information would include fossil fuel alternatives, the benefits of energy efficiency improvements, compliance with the New York City uh, Energy Conservation Code, and other laws designed, including Local 97 to reduce building energy use and carbon emissions. Unless building owners are provided with information about alternatives to fossil fuels and ways to reduce our greenhouse gases, they're unlikely to make the major changes we need to get to the future. Uh, intro 1982A requires that natural gas powered fuel cell emissions be compared to the electricity grid marginal emissions instead of the average emissions. However, the law provides an exemption for these fuel cells uh, before January of 2023, uh, or by rules made by the commissioner that would have happened as part of Local Law 97. Uh, it further requires that when developing these energy consumptions, uh, the building commissioner can consider NYSERDA and state energy plan forecasts for Zone J. Uh, each bill will help us become a more sustainable city, especially 1946, as if we don't give these building owners the alternatives, uh, we will not have a, you know, we'll have a lot of buildings at the end of 2024 looking to uh, you know, get the homework due. We need to start doing that now. Uh, before I begin, before I end, I don't know why it says begin here. Before I end, I wanna thank the committee staff, uh, committee counsel Samara Swanston, uh, policy analyst Nadia Johnson and Ricky Chola, financial analyst Jonathan Seltzer, my legislative counsel, Nicholas Wazowski, for their hard work. Uh, and with that, uh, I will turn it over to the clerk to call the roll. Good afternoon, William Martin, committee clerk, roll call vote committee on environmental protection. All items are coupled. Chair Constantinides. Aye. Oh, wait, two, aye, sorry. Thank you, Mike. Levin. Permission to explain my vote? Sorry, I have the, the baby here. Um, <clears throat> uh, so I just wanted to take a, a moment um, to speak on, um, on uh, intro 1982. Um, I will be voting in favor of this bill and all bills on the agenda today. Um, uh, but I know that people have raised concerns about this piece of legislation. And so I would like to just take a moment to speak on my vote. Um, this, 
I'm confident after speaking it through with the chair and um, and others uh, on regarding this legislation that this bill will not um, create a new um, right for fuel cells or any other type of um, of natural gas powered uh, energy source. Um, it merely allows for um, fuel cells to be prescribed a, um, a coefficient number by NYSERDA during the interim period until the city um, prescribes it a number by, by January 1st of 2023 as per yeah. local law 97. So in other words, this is, um, this is, is addressing um, uh, a, a gap that was in local law 97. Now, um, it's true that fuel cells are um, powered by natural gas, but this does not change the, uh, the requirements under the bill for any building or development um, using fuel cells to meet its uh, uh, objectives under local law 97 of 50% by 2030 and 80% by 2050. So it does not, in terms of um, uh, carbon impact, it does not, it does not actually affect those um, those those buildings uh, overall uh, output. And um, uh, lastly, um, it is th this um, this will be it will be very narrow in application. Um, it does not um, for a building to do this. It would essentially have to be in process already. Um, I know that um, um, we've heard concerns from hospitals um, that uh, want to utilize this technology. Uh, hospitals are in a unique position um, when it comes to their um, requirements for energy. They have a lot of life-saving equipment that is has to be running 24-7, uh, that has to have um, a backup ability that that can't those needs can't be met today and in the next two years um, with um, with all with 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 alternative energy means so uh, solar and wind and so um, I don't believe that this is a kind of a, uh, a, 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 a an opening for any developer in the city to um, to to use natural gas or fuel cells um, in the long term, because its application is really only this bill's only application is really only two years uh, or two years and three months. Because if by by the time uh, we get to uh, January first, twenty twenty three, it will be superseded by the actions of of the city under Local Law ninety seven. And so, it's it's a very narrow. I understand the cons the concerns and considerations that people have raised. Um, I think that it is so narrow an application that I think it's um, it's appropriate to, to, to vote in favor of this legislation. So thank you very much for your time. Menchaca. Permission to explain my vote? Granted. Uh, thank you, Chair. And uh, thank you to Councilmember Levin for explaining his vote. I'm going to be voting no on intro 1982 and yes on the rest. And with local law 97, uh, it already has emission factors for natural gas and there's no need for there to be a separate factor for fuel cells. Uh, so there's no need to give special exemptions to developers or corporations selling this specific technology. Uh, and so what I believe is that intro 1982 actually undermines our city's efforts to transition to renewable energy and mitigate the potentially devastating effects of climate change here in the city. Uh, by creating a separate emissions factor for natural gas fuel cells, intro 1982 actually circumvents experts of the advisory board uh, that have been called uh, uh, recently in making these decisions. Uh, so this process is integral to the fair and equitable implementation of this law, 97. Natural gas is a dirty and harmful energy source that our city should be moving away from uh, wherever possible, not facilitating its use and distribution 
experts have shown that the level of emissions produced by fuel cells would be tantamount to burning an equal amount of natural gas in the combustion process. So gas production, including the process of fracking, creates massive amounts of methane, and that's a greenhouse gas uh, that is 80 82 times more potent than the carbon uh, that stays in the atmosphere for 12 years. Uh, just that amount of time in which we must transition to renewable energies in order to mitigate this climate catastrophe that we're all talking about. Um, so for those reasons and others, um, and I'm hoping other members talk about this, I'm voting no on 1982 and yes on 142, yes on 143, yes on 1851, yes on 1946. Thank you for the time. Thank you. Jaeger. Tech issues, sorry. I vote aye. Ulrich. I'm voting no on 1982 and aye on all others. Committee on Environmental Protection, introductions 1851 and 1946A are adopted by the committee with five in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions, with introduction 1982 also being adopted by the committee with a vote of three in the affirmative, two in the negative, and no abstentions. Thank you. Hey. All right, sorry about that. So I guess with that vote completed, um, I will gavel this committee hearing of the environmental